name's KT. Artists have been fascinated with the human form throughout history, but most of those forms have been living. Today, we'll take a look at the non-living form in art. The first work we're going to look at is a print by Frank Boyden. Frank Boyden was an American artist born in 1942 and was a sculptor for most of his career. He began his Uncle Skulky series of etchings and lithographs in 2000. Uncle Skulky, featured here as a skull, is a skeleton that often performs as a living, breathing human presence. We find him in a reliquary, a box that's used to store holy objects, usually human remains. We find Uncle Skulky with a series of candles around his head, all of them lit, which could be portents of a miracle or a symbol of Judaism, such as a menorah. Next to it, we find a crucifix. And below that, to his right, we see a head on a platter. There are two famous stories of heads on platters in Judeo-Christian thought. The first is these, the beheading of Holofernes by Judith in the Torah, and the beheading of John the Baptist in the New Testament. This head could represent either of those works, and nothing in this tells us which one it could be. However, the symbolism in this object tells us that it could be seen as a commentary on death in society, specifically through a religious context. It can also be seen in a rather humorous light. The objects here are rather inelegantly displayed. They are um, rather humorously portrayed, in fact. and we see a bird up here cawing above the dead bird down here. So again, we have symbolism of life and death and perhaps a humorous commentary on images of death in society. Our second work is rather different. This is a Day of the Dead figurine. The holiday of Day of the Dead is celebrated from Halloween, October 31st, through All Souls Day. November 2nd. The fashioning of skeletal-like figures for this holiday dates to pre-Columbian times, in which the, it is believed that uh, natives of Mexico thought that there was a plane beyond this world that the deceased occupied. And creating images in this fashion would allow the living to maintain contact with the dead. These pre-Columbian beliefs have been mixed with Christian thought and have developed to the holiday that we see today. While Day of the Dead is usually celebrated in Mexico, most places with a strong Hispanic population will also celebrate it. This figure is probably intended for the tourist trade, and the biggest clue towards that is the, the person that it is most likely depicting. Judging by the black jumpsuit rimmed with gold and the distinctive hairstyle, this Day of the Dead figure most likely represents American entertainer Elvis Presley, who died in 1977. Rather than acting as a memorial or as contact between the living and the dead, this is more likely thought of possibly as a humorous figurine for the tourist trade, for Americans seeking an authentic Mexican object that represents American culture. It also demonstrates the influence of American culture on, on Mexican thought and art. Now, while those two objects, the Frank Boyd in print and the Day of the Dead figure, could be construed as humorous, the third object we'll look at is not in any way intended to be humorous. The third object we have is a print by Utagawa Kuniyoshi, one of the great masters of Japanese woodblock art. Kuniyoshi created this work around 1845, during a period in which Japan, in which Japan had evoked something known as the Sumptuary Edicts. It was one of a series of five. Sumptuary Edicts were intended to limit the influence of the merchant class on society. And one of the ways that merchants exhibited their, themselves and portrayed their wealth was through these very sumptuous works of art that displayed their own culture. At the time of this, sumptuary, of this particular Sumptuary Edict, Actors were not permitted to be portrayed in art. So instead of portraying a play, as this, as this work normally would, Kuniyoshi instead, instead described this as 
a take on a traditional historical tale in Japanese history. The, fi the figures here, uh, we read this print from left to right, and we'll start here with Princess Takayasha. Historically, her father staged a revolt in 970 CE to overthrow the Japanese government and establish a new one on his own land. Her father was killed in battle, but she survived and moved back to the family home where this takes place. This figure here, Mitsukuni, who was a representative of the government, had come to this palace to seek out survivors and supporters of her father. When she saw him coming, she began reading off of this scroll. And that was a magic spell that brought forth this skeleton to attack Mitsukuni. This work is very dramatic in scope. It is considered Kuniyoshi's masterpiece. And what we see here is an extremely realistic depiction of the skeleton. It is believed that Kuniyoshi had access to medical drawings and landscape sketches. You see this in terms of a mountain and we see the tripartite or the triptych style of demonstration adding to the drama and the idea of a western perspective of depth. This is a masterful work, but for all the detail we see in the skeleton and with the surroundings, we see very little detail in the faces of the people themselves. This is again to show that this is not an actor print, but a portrayal of a story. We have now seen three images of skeletons in works of art. And one of the things that ties all of us together is that we all have our own skeletons. These three have their own stories to tell. What do you think yours will say? Thank you very much.